Hello, hello there everybody and welcome to another Planet Zoo stream. I'm Elle and I'm one of the community managers here at Frontier and it's the 10th week of Planet Zoo. I cannot believe we have been here for 10 weeks and what better way to celebrate it than today we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at some of the community builds that were done for the Planet Zoo competition and I'm really excited. I've been having a lot of fun. And I know you're used to seeing me here with the guests, but this week it's just going to be me and you. We're going to spend some time and I'm really excited to just have this time, get close to the community and look at what you guys have made because that's what Planet Zoo is all about. Uh, I'm going to take a look and see all, who all is here. I've been having fun reading the chat while we are... Uh, while we were on the countdown because I've seen a lot of love for the wetlands animal pack <laughs> which I'm really really loving because I was sitting here jamming along to the music the entire time and it's just it's so adorable so adorable <laughs> so of course I've seen Fran in the chat uh one of my lovely co-workers who is here today with me streaming but is here in the chat helping me out so thank you and hi Fran I'm seeing our mods um I'm seeing Osric. Hey there, thank you for helping out as always. I'm seeing Swifty back again. I'm seeing Between Two Gays and even some of our creators. Thank you, thank you for joining. And yeah, I'm really excited to just jump in and take a look at everything that you guys have been creating. So without further ado, let's head on over. So, or have the game break. There we go. It just wanted to have a moment. It was just having a second. You know what? It's been one of those days. I'm also going to quickly move me over. But um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm distinctly having a day. <laughs> Earlier on, I went into the Frontier Kitchen because I wanted to get a cup of tea and all of the mugs were gone and I still don't know why and so instead I've had to get this cappuccino cup and it feels overly large for tea and now it feels like I'm drinking broth and then all the spoons were missing and then I came in here and all of my post-it notes were gone so we're having a day <laughs> but there is no better remedy for that than Planet Zoo that is genuinely one of the ways that I have looked after myself multiple times while I'm having a day at home and I'm sure that's the same with much of our community. So I have loaded in a bunch of our community builds and for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with what we're doing here this is Plan Elt Zoo which is um, aptly named after the one and only Elt. <laughs> I did actually name it. I asked for suggestions on social media and one of our community named it and it was too good to pass up. But this is a zoo that we have all been building together with an amalgamation of community builds and me learning how to really get stuck into sandbox because I'd only ever really had a chance to play franchise. And it's been really great slowly learning and adapting more with the help of all of our wonderful people here in the community. So first off, we started with, of course, our, our badgers. We've got a bunch of community builds right through here. We've got many, many animals. So many incredible creations. This huge custom creation that was made by Jurassic, which was like custom made for Plan Elt and entirely based on our fairy tale area, which is this area right around here that we did as our first section of our zoo. Uh, we have started moving on to building our next area, which is why we've got some penguins, but the Plan Elt Zoo building competition was actually based around this little area here because there was a gap left. And I took to the forums and challenged people to see if you guys could build something to go in it. And in return, somebody could win some fun Planet Zoo goodies. And you guys delivered. I have got 11 amazing entries, I believe. So we're going to take a look. I will give a disclaimer first and foremost before I go through highlighting everybody that one of them broke. And so I want to give a moment and just highlight how amazing this build is. And if you guys, like I have checked out on the forums and everything, but I have tried to fix this before the stream multiple times and it won't let me access it. But um, this is a fairy tale book display by one of our creators. This is by Adam Up Gaming. 
who I'm sure if you're in the zoo community, you have definitely seen because Adam Up is incredible. So while I can't show this build today, rest assured I have had a look at it and considered it when considering the competition. And of course, I want to highlight you and direct towards the channel. So if you don't know Adam's work, he is an absolutely astounding builder in the Planet Zoo community. And you can find him on YouTube slash C slash Adam Up or on most other platforms as Adam Up Gaming. I believe on Twitter, it's Adam Up Gaming 1. Um, so definitely go and check out his work because I'm so sad I can't highlight it. And Adam, if you watch this, if you find out, then please do let me know and I will, like if, I, if we can fix this issue, uh, then I will load up in another stream and show off. So as it still gets a chance to be shown because I want to show all the community entries. But nonetheless, we're gonna go and take a look at everybody else's. I did my best, I'm sorry. So I am just gonna go down my list. I have done that thing again, where once I found them, I have many post-it notes because <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I included all the info and where to find everything and could highlight everybody properly. So let me find our first one in amongst all of our builds. And I'm going to remember to make things actually be in the floor. Look at me. I'm learning. My worst habit. So first off, we have this fairy shrine, which is by Carrie Watermelon on the Steam Workshop. And the theme around this one is around the Fae. So I believe they are also from Scotland, which is where I'm from, in case you can't tell by the accent. I do try and soften the accent as much as possible. Uh, but it's based around the Fae, which are a really big thing in Celtic mythology, and it's so cute. And not only that, I believe it's actually glowing. I'm going to adjust the time of day so as we can see that it glows. Look at it light up. It's so magical. <laughs> and this is, this is really cool. I love that it lights up and that it because I think that just really adds to the like cozy fairy tale mystical vibe I really like seeing these kind of builds when they're at twilight and considering this is a feature area for our zoo I think that this little detailing is really nice and I'm going to get in close and see some of the details so we've got some candles dotted about which are giving that lovely glowing effect we've got tiny little mushrooms look at those toadstools oh I like that this one's even got little spots that's very cute I really love the detailing here and the magic fairy stone. And of course, we've got all the flowers dotted about. We have this little like offering pool at the front of it, which is really nice. And I think just adds a, a really good touch to it. It makes it feel a lot more like a shrine. So I really love this. This really touches a little like nostalgic, homesick vibe for me because the Fae are such a big thing in Scottish mythology. And it also made me happy that it is spelt fairy as in traditional fairy rather than fairy as in the tooth fairy, um, which shows me that they really were considering the fae when building this. So yeah, I love this one. I also love that you used a cherry tree specifically. I think that kind of adds to it. There's something about cherry trees that's just really beautiful and it complements the like little blue touches throughout it. I just think it's a really nice color assembly. So. I'm seeing a lot of love for this in the chat. I'm just seeing it glows, it glows. <laughs> I'm glad other people are as enthusiastic about that as I am. It's so pretty. And I'm, I'm really glad that you guys think it's as nice as I do. So yeah, this one is by Carrie Watermelon. You can find this on the Steam Workshop. You'll be able to find all of today's builds on the Steam Workshop. And I will be posting all of them in the description below when this gets saved on YouTube afterwards. So if you want to find something, don't worry, I will make it as accessible as possible for you. But of course, I want to give people a shout out while I'm showing off their builds. I'm seeing somebody say that it's giving them uh, an Outlander feeling, which would make sense considering that's a Scottish TV show. <laughs> the Scotland vibes are strong, which I'm very proud of. I'm glad this is what I've started the stream with, just hearkening back getting very homesick since it's just been the holidays and I'm now down in England for Frontier but of course I love it very very grateful to be here but Scotland will always own my heart viva la Caledonia <laughs> nonetheless I will move on to the next one which I believe the person that made it is actually in chat from what I've been seeing 
So, you just make sure that your trees aren't floating in the abyss. Just wait, count down how many it'll be until I forget before one of them. This is the Elton B corner by Eben, who is in our chat. Eben is one of our creators, so hi Eben. And also you can find Eben on Steam as iPun, which I have a bone to pick about this because I pronounced Eben's name wrong as Iben for ages. You did not help yourself by having us not pronounce it Iben by making your Steam name iPun because that makes it seem more like it. But <laughs> nonetheless, uh, Eben is one of our creators and you can find him on YouTube at youtube slash c slash zwed plan is I don't know if you pronounce it zwed or z-w-e-d and spell each letter, but I always say it's zwed. Um, and you can find him on most social media like that as well. But if you do just search Eben Planet Zoo, it will come up because he is a creator that a lot of our community defers to. And I can see why I am a little bit biased here, considering this build is themed around the one and only. <laughs> but let me adjust the lighting so as we can get a good view in here. So this is the Elton Bee Corner, which is a little educational area to learn about the bees with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that I always have like a little bee mascot here, which is very fitting because yellow is my favourite colour and I do have a big soft spot for bees. So it's got a bunch of little cushions on the floor, almost as if you could get cosy down and sit and learn about it. And a little pseudo educational podium for somebody to come in and teach everybody all about the bees. And this is, I did not, I haven't looked thoroughly through these builds. But the colouring at the back is the non-binary flag. And in case you don't know, I am non-binary. And this feels like a very nice personal touch that Eben has included. So thank you. That, oh, that hits me right in the little heart. Oh, <laughs> And there's a squirrel! Ah! I love it so much. <laughs> I didn't know it's the squirrel. I have been hiding squirrel topiaries <laughs> everywhere in this zoo build. And there's a squirrel! Well, that instantly puts it in my favour. I'm totally biased. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry for your ears. I'm so sorry, chat. <laughs> I got very excited. <laughs> but I'm seeing other people be very excited for the squirrel, so I think it was worth it. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, <laughs> sorry, uh, this is what I'm going to be known for now, screaming over squirrel statues. Nonetheless, look at our little bees. This is my little mascot, my little friend. I love their little sparkly eyes. We've got one over here on the flower with the squirrel, the best feature of this entire zoo. And yeah, I, I love this. I love this so much. I love that you use the non-binary flag colouring. I love the like cosy comfy feel. I've suspended it too far in the air. I've already seen you tell me in chat and I know that the podiums are flying. Look, I tried. I tried. <laughs> but here, here, we'll do it again. Oh no, my vendors have been the abyss again. The other thing I'm infamous for. We'll just... You saw nothing. Let me fix this. Let me do it right this time. There's so much grass. I need to get rid of the grass for this to look right. That's about right. And then let me just uh, fix it so as people don't have grass sticking through. There we go. Much better. Now there's not floating podiums. Anybody who guessed that them um, the time until I leave on levitating was then well done you win a point <laughs> but nonetheless i really really love this one i know i'm biased but i really do this is this whole little corner this the excitement i had over seeing this has really pulled on my little heartstrings so thank you Eben, and i'm glad that you were here to be able to see me freak out over how cute this is because it was really good 
I'm looking at your comment. The shop on the side is where they would sell honey. Oh, I didn't even see. That's adorable. Oh, that's so cute. Look at it. It's the little NB corner for the zoo because I'm out his NB. I love that this is why you picked the bee theming. Oh, this is so cute. And this is so fitting considering we're getting like closer and closer to Pride Month. And thank you. This was very thoughtful and had a lot of little tidbits to me and to paying attention to the community and stuff. And I really appreciate it. This is a very, very sweet and sentimental build. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I'm seeing somebody say, just came into the Planet Zoo community and it's so wholesome and welcoming. So hi, Butterfly, and welcome. I am glad you're here. And yeah, we work really hard to try and keep this space a really welcoming, wholesome, safe space. And that's the vibe that I really want to have in these streams. Like, this week it's just me. I'm just chilling with you guys. We're just going to have a little quiet, peaceful time looking at some community stuff and just spending some time together. And that's what it's all about and you guys make my like i know i know this is my job and you would expect it to just be it's my job but it's not i really really care about what you guys are doing and i try and pay attention and get stuck into the community as much as i can and i've been having community members message me about it recently and stuff and it really means a lot to me how excited you guys are and seeing what you're making and i love learning and making stuff too and just get to spend this time with you you're a really great community and i'm glad that we're getting more and more people coming in and feeling that vibe as well so let me have the next one and find it so as we can take a look at another entry da, 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 da. try and make sure i'm not making this flow Yeah, let's go with that. So, this, as you might be able to tell, is a Rapunzel tower. This was created by Cedric and it has a waterfall, but, 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 I believe, I might need to hook it up. Do I need to add a power source? Give me a second. This is the problem with showing off builds that are in the middle of nowhere. Let me whack down. Where's my go-to power smack? I don't care if that's floating. But will that power it? Yeah, there we go. All of the floating lanterns glow. It's so cute. Those community competitions made me so happy. <laughs> I really love how adorable it's gotten and how much everybody really embraced the fairy tale vibes and the the aesthetic I wanted to go for and how cute it is, but the detailing and having this all here and look at all the flowers and the hair the whole way up. This is such a cute homage to a very beloved movie. And the detailing on it's just so cute. And look, there's even like a little little Rapunzel at the bottom. And I love the waterfall. It's such a nice little detail and fits so well. It really pulls it together and like breaks up the detailing around all the lanterns. But this is so cute. I love, I love how you've got the little like flower box at the top as well. It's just, oh. I feel like this really captures the like fairy tale essence because obviously it is a fairy tale, but it's also uh, Rapunzel originally was a German fairy tale, I believe, since Rapunzel would mean lettuce in fairy tale, if I remember correct. In fairy tale? Yes, fairy tale, the language of fairy tale. <laughs> uh, I believe Rapunzel means lettuce in German. So considering the whole vibe we've got and fairy tale areas quite often tend to be that kind of theming because of the whole Brothers Grimm. And that fits the vibe we have in the area of the zoo quite well. This really does match it. And I, again, I'm very biased over things that glow. I just think it's very pretty. And oh, the running water is so pretty as well. 
so yeah, this one is the Rapunzel Tower by Cedric. Um, I love it. I love it a lot. I'm seeing people showing just like that the game is wonderful and that I'm seeing it will glow. It glows. <laughs> the chat gets just as excited as I do every time a build has glowing capability. It's very cool. I'm very glad I actually remembered to light things because I want to be able to show off if they have fancy lighting. Like, that's such a nice feature. If people take the time to light a build, I want to show it. So, what's up next? <laughs> um, next up is one that's another one themed around a previous Plan Elsu stream. <laughs> oh, the sheer reaction I had when I saw this um, made my day. So, this is the Bunny Centerpiece by Odicus, which, in case you weren't aware, um, in one of our streams, Fran very adorably that started speaking about bunnies in a very cute little voice and ever since Fran has become hereby dubbed as Bunny um, during our Cappy Cam stream recently for when we launched the Wetlands Animal Pack. Uh, during all of Fran's talks everybody was very excitedly saying Bunny in the chat and it was very very cute and so this is an homage to that and it's another Planet Zoo sign which I really love. I love that this is a big community moment for these streams and for joining them um, and I'm seeing a lot of I love it in the chat. I'm seeing Fran. I'm very glad you're in the chat to be able to see this. Um, when I was going through all of the bills and loading them up to take a brief look before coming into the stream, I saw this and immediately buckled laughing because it made me so happy. So genuinely, thank you. 10 out of 10. And Onikus, I'm so glad you're here to see this as well. <laughs> so this, this is Fran, my very own Fran to keep me company in my zoo, which also does actually match very well to another sign that we already have in the game, which is the... Planet Zoo welcome sign, which has, I'm going to pause the game, which has a badger, which has become my motif because of the hair and the backdrop I use every week on stream. And it has bagpipes, bagpipes, because I'm really Scottish. Um, but we already have an Elt Planet Zoo sign, and now we could have a Fran one too, which I find very, very funny. <laughs> and I really love the little, the little heart on the chest because we do, we do love Fran. We love Fran so much. Show some love for Fran in the chat because Fran is in the chat and Fran deserves it. Um, <laughs> and of course we have the little bunny topiaries around and I'm hoping oh, you didn't put a squirrel on one of them. No, Onicus, how could you? How could you not? Include? I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm adding it myself. There can't be a bunch of topiaries here and not be at least one squirrel. Yes, much better. I fixed the travesty. There we go. Because every, every Fran needs an elk here at Planet Zoo. <laughs> Things are much better now. I love it. I am slightly terrified by the eyes. Like, I feel like it's watching me. Like, what does it know? But at the same point, like, it, it, it's very cute. It's, it's tied to Fran and it's kind of funny. So that wins at points. And, but this just makes me feel like, what does Fran know? <laughs> I see Fran saying every Fran does need an L in the chat. So much love to you. Uh, and then I saw you follow up with just like me always watching. What does Fran know? Is anybody else slightly scared? But, like, I don't know, man. This bunny's seen some stuff. This bunny has seen, this bunny has seen some stuff. <laughs> but, um, I love this a lot. I really like that this is just a big representation of the 10 weeks we've spent here building Plan Elsie together. We're going to keep building. And that's, that's a really nice little homage. So thank you, Odokus. And... Thank you, everybody, who is showing a lot of love in the chat, especially for my enthusiasm. I would be very excited for this stream. I had to postpone it because um, I got sick, which is why I wasn't here the other week. 
and then of course we had Cappy Cam, which is so worth postponing it for and had some amazing keeper talks and some time with animals and got to raise money for charity and got to celebrate the Planet Zoo Wetlands Animal Pack, which has been amazing. But I'm really glad to be here and get stuck in with you guys and just take a look at the great things we've been building. Look at them. We're only four down and we've still got many to go. So uh, I'm seeing someone say they're more scared for the teeth and you know, maybe that's fair. Maybe that's fair. I can vet that Fran has much nicer teeth. But the bunny suits them. <laughs> Let me get up our next one. If I can find it. Goes through everything to find the one I mean. That's not a helpful name. That's not the name it was uploaded with. That's not helpful. Well, it's the only one I can't find, so I think it's, yeah. But you do have helpful sync signs. So thank you, I appreciate that. I hope you enjoy this. I spent around six hours in total to build this. It would be much appreciated to have some feedback. Have a nice day. Well, thank you. We appreciate you building it as well. And of course, we're going to give you some feedback and take a look at it right now. So this is the Cave Shop Shell and Waterfall by Frustrated Rhino on the Steam Workshop. And there is a lot of detail to this one. So I'm going to I'm going to go through everything. First off, I need to hit play. So as the waterfall activates. So there is a waterfall that runs the whole way down right through all the little mountain area. I'm going to play it because I like the sound of the running water. And then we've got a little elf door. And of course, please do not disturb the elf, which is very cute because either elf or fairy doors is also a very big thing, not just in Celtic mythology, but in like fairy tale mythology in general. So this is a lovely little touch. And I love that the door is like teeny, teeny, tiny. <laughs> And then we've got anything is possible in Planet Zoo. We have a little reading nook, which I really love this vibe. One, because it really matches the kind of education theme that we have. Because even if people are reading fairy tales, there are lessons to be learned in fairy tales. That's why they're important. And that's why they're so good for kids when we're young. And education is such an important aspect of Planet Zoo um, and people learning about animals. And I really love this. This also, this area would have made me so happy as a kid because I used to go to zoos so much when I was little. And I was also a giant book nerd. Uh, I, my favorite thing when I was a kid was my library card. I think I had as many books out as I could physically carry at any given time. And so this is actually a very fitting thing for me. So I really, really love this. Um, there is more. There is your enter at own risk danger area that leads up. So I love, I love the use of the steam effects here to really get the danger across and all of the barriers. And when you look in, it's got little embers. This is very cool, but I don't think I'm going to enter there. I don't think I'm going to do the risk. Here we have a chief beef shop, I believe. Yes, in a little cave filled with more books that's hidden around the corner, surrounded by toadstools. I cannot get over how much you managed to fit in such a small build. Like, space-wise, you really maximise the amount of land you had to work with for this build, and it's incredibly impressive. So, here we have a little chief beef shop with all the little detail. Look at the little basket. Basket? Bucket. Suddenly forgot the word bucket, but you know, it's one of those days. I've already told you about my mug issues. It happens. So <laughs> we have this hidden around the back. And then up the top, we have a mountain meadow, which is where we have all of these amazing toadstools and foliage decorations. We even have this little nest with some of the display eggs. And I just can't get over the detailing of this. I'm also going to put it down because I believe this is another one that has fairy lights. However, I'm probably going to need to stick down another lighting, another power source because it's too far away. So let me do my thing again. Just 
Boop. Perfect. Oh, look at the fairy lights. <laughs> and this really adds just to like this serene, tranquil little area of a reading nook. Like I have fairy tale lights, fairy tale lights? I have fairy lights hung above my bed. Uh, and I just think it makes such a cozy little comfortable vibe and it really pulls this area together. Like I could just imagine settling down here, coming to the zoo and then chilling with my book. And like I've, I've taken a walk around and I'm tired and I want to have a break and I'm going to snuggle up in the fairy tale area and read my book and be under the fairy lights and have the sound of the running water. And it would be so peaceful and such a nice area surrounded by all the animals and nature. This would be so cute. I'm seeing excitement for it. it glows it does glow this is the theme of the builds is it glows <laughs> and even the door lights up look at this oh that's cute oh that's very cute i like this i just cannot get over the sheer amount that you've managed to compress into something with such a small footprint frustrated rhino this is very impressive you really, really maximised what you were able to put into one competition submission and I applaud you for it because that is not an easy thing to do. So, so far we are five builds through. We've still got a lot to go, so I'm going to grab up our next one. <laughs> I'm seeing somebody say, the fairy lights look like you could sink your fingies into them and feel warmth and magic, and I agree. They are very, like bushy i can't think of a better word to explain it but it, i feel like that gets the point i mean across and it is very very good and yeah i'm just seeing a lot of love for it i believe as well hold on i believe the bunny had music when you were near it if i remember correctly from the steam workshop but it's kind of hard for me to hear my audio right now. So potentially, if not, I haven't hooked this up right and I'm really sorry. But I know that is a feature on the build because I'm sure I remember reading the Steam page properly. Nonetheless, let me get up the next build. Uh, where am I up to? I'm up to here. We rotate, we lower into the floor. Oh God, how far into the floor? We base it on the pumpkins. Sure, let's go with that. This is a pumpkin pastry shop. Uh, this is by Musical Geek 22 on the Steam Workshop. So thank you so much for your submission. And this is a little pumpkin pastry area for like being sold. And so they've used uh, Bernie's Bake little counter, I believe. Because yes, they've used the Bernie's Bake counter, which is our cake shop that was released for the anniversary uh, in Planet Zoo. And instead of it being cakes it would be pastries which is really really fitting and i think this is so cute like the fact that you've matched this cupcake on the top onto the sign and then the little jack-o-lantern face and of course the fairy lights which means this one's gonna glow too <laughs> it's so cute i really love the bold like the huge orange and green theming obviously because it's a pumpkin but I think that would make a really nice feature area if we place this down and the like what's the word I'm looking for not rustic rustic is the right like a similar word but natural uh the natural look fences around the pumpkin makes this really look like a little pumpkin patch like if you were going to go and it's it's October and you're going to go pumpkin picking and you're going to go to a little local farm. Uh, I grew up around a lot of farm areas and this really captures that little small town nature farm vibe, especially with the dark wood and the ivy growing up everything that you've placed. It's just so pretty. And of course, I love that this insinuates that this is just a big pumpkin house. It's, it's so cute. I would visit a pumpkin house. It would also match really well with show off another build this build that's right beside it because the area has a little pumpkin display house at it so both of them together would end up looking like a big pumpkin patch which i'm assuming is probably why 
uh, Musical Geek decided to make this one and I think that's really cool. I, it's really nice that they took that into consideration and made this whole area like an expanded themed area. Which is just awesome. Let me zoom back. So of course we see fairy lights which means we do in fact need to adjust the lighting. So as it glows! It's what we like to see! I love this. I like that even there's lights around the pumpkins to highlight them. Oh, that's such a nice touch. And there's little candles on the side here to backlight the Bernie's Bake Store. They even put a little menu on the pumpkin. <laughs> oh, they've even got a little door here, which is a nice touch. So as it actually looks like that's how the shopkeeper would get into the shop. I like this very much. Thank you very much for your submission, Musical Geek 22. I'm going to get very excited. I love this stream. It's a great stream. So, next up, I've gotten through one post-it note's worth. I've still got one post-it note to go. Oh, yeah. Let me load up our next one. Uh, this one. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. Where will we? Let's zoom over here. And now uh, let's just use lower just a little bit. This is a nursery by BB. There is a lot of detail in here, but this is by BB on the Steam Workshop, and. This is the idea of just having a little animal, that, like a little egg nursery. So there are little egg scenery items that you can place in the game. And this is themed around them, where they have put up education boards, sh like showing off what animals the eggs would be from. So obviously they're not actually from them, but it makes a really nice uh, display area. And the idea is that this would be an educational section for your zoo. There's these flyers and posters on the side. This is very cool. And I love the very natural look. I really love the, the like light wood and the nature vibes and all of the greenery growing around. I feel like plant life growing up walls and like round trellises is a very big fairy tale vibe. And this also features that. Instead of ivy, you've gone for a more fresh look, but it still looks really cute and it actually matches the grapevines we have around the fallow deer enclosure really well and then there is a note on the steam page that you could add a small exhibit to this if you wanted to which you could and this would be a really good place to add that into but i want to take a look in the window a bit more if i can get my camera lowered a bit they've got the little clipboard and we've got like a full set of the eggs ignore the fact that there's grass growing through the floor let me let me do the thing. Fix your flooring so it doesn't just look like everywhere's overgrown and abandoned. <laughs> I'm seeing people saying they forget to use the flyers. Oh, it's Plastic Swans. Hi, it's another one of our creators. Absolutely love your work. Um, I've been having a lot of fun looking at it recently. But yeah, the flyers are such a good way to, especially for an educational area, really make something have that vibe. And I really love the use of them here. And I think this is really cool. I could just imagine having some of your like zookeepers and educators come in here and sit down and be able to like display to people what's going on. It's something that creates a great illusion of an educational experience and we love educational experiences here. And yeah, I just think that this is a really nice feature for something that makes a great use of a scenery item that doesn't get enough love. That's twice that we see love for the eggs in here. I think that's, that's great. So yeah, this one is the nursery by BB on, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. It's B-I-B-I, -I, which I would assume is BB on the Steam Workshop. So thank you so much for your submission. And I really, really love the use of the flyers and stuff here. Why? There's also just some additional eggs expanded out the back floating. We're just gonna ignore that. 
sometimes things get lost in builds and you know it happens to me too i have definitely more than once left stuff floating in random areas <laughs> and considering how often i keep accidentally not sinking stuff into the floor and or spam deleting and firing stuff i'm not allowed to judge anybody <laughs> And seeing somebody say the grass that is overgrown areas could just be a hairy carpet. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that would be the best in what's going to have to be like a clinical and sterile environment. But you know what? We, I like your style. <laughs> Let me load up the next one. Do, 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 do. There we go. Then sink into the floor just a bit. So this one is the Fire Salamander Treat by Darth Quell, who I'm not sure if they're here. I can't remember if I saw them in the chat or not. But they're here sometimes, and Darth Quell's a name I see coming up a lot. So, hi! And this is just a little feature for an exhibit animal. We don't really have many exhibit... Do we have any exhibit? No, we do. We have some in the... in Jurassic's big Here Be the Dragons build. But we don't have any standalone ones, and this is just a really nice little fairy tale feature to be able to include one. And I do love fire salamanders, so that is a very good one to pick. Look at these little friends. I love them. So the fire salamander, if I remember correctly, I'm gonna check. Do I have caps on? Give me, give me my salamander, why do you hate me? My brain has completely forgotten why I was checking. Do you not just love ADHD moments where suddenly men go blank? <laughs> Nonetheless, the fire salamander is a wee cutie. Who would fit very well in this little area and i do love that you've managed to make it a little nature vibe and very overhanged and canopied which would match really really well with the fact that we have all of this overgrowth in this area we've got a very like luscious tree which almost makes it feel like a little enchanted forest and i think that's very cute and it's also different coloring the trees that you've used which is nice because i do like to kind of try and break up so it doesn't look all of the same I'm seeing people in chat uh, saying, like, laughing at me just going brain blank. Thank you for your, your appreciation. Uh, sometimes it happens. I forget the train of thought I'm on. Sometimes I just forget words and the brain just stops. But <laughs> that's, that's life sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, this one is by Darth Quell. Thank you so much for this. It is a very cute little feature to have more exhibit animals because they don't get enough love in an area of Plan L2 and I am very big of support of that. I think that our exhibit animals are great and I really really like them and I love seeing the way that people build enclosures for them like decorating the outside of them and stuff and this would be a great way to feature another one. What am I on to next? Next up on my list was the one that is locked out for me. I mentioned this at the start, but if you are just tuning in, there is a fairy tale scene by Adam Up, who is one of our creators that I see a lot, and Adam's work is incredible. So I can't show it because it will not let me, and I've tried several times to fix this, and I'm so sorry, I do not know what is going on with the build. If you can get it fixed, I will show it off in another Planet Zoo stream. But unfortunately, I cannot show you this one, but it is a fairy tale book. It's got a bunch of detailing on it and it's really cool and you should definitely go and look at it on the Steam Workshop if you can. I will still include it in the link in the description when I'm showing off all of the other entries so as people can go and check out themselves and maybe somebody can fix the issue that I'm having with it. But you can find Adam at uh, youtube.com slash c slash adamup and then you can find him on most other places as Adam Up Gaming or Adam Up Gaming one on Twitter, I believe. So while I can't show off your build today, I'm really sorry. 
it is absolutely great so please do go look at it and while I can't show it off it is definitely getting taken into consideration for when I pick the winner at the end of the stream because I have already looked at it on uh, on Steam and given it a good look when I couldn't get it to load in here so I am very familiar with it I promise let me see so our last two are actually two entries from Twisted Barbie so I will put them both out. I'm seeing people say that it's it's not researched, doesn't make sense because I'm in sandbox. That's what I tried and I still couldn't fix it. I had a look through research settings and trying to fix it and it just I could not and I tried unloading it and reloading it and a few other things I just could not get it to work. But maybe it's just my game being fussy today. If I can get it to load before another stream, I will definitely try. And then this is one of them. And then where's the other one? This is the other one. This is way bigger than I thought because I was multiple in it. Whoa, this took me by surprise. Okay. So we're gonna... I did not expect that. Okay, so these, what I thought was two builds, turned out to be many more than two builds uh, are by Twisted Barbie on the Steam Workshop and I will show you off the first one this is a Mad Hatter house which that's actually one of the first Halloween costumes I ever did I really love the Mad Hatter I think he's a quirky little friend and I love this little homage to him I love that it's really subtle like there's nothing insanely screaming that it's a mad hat house but it really fits the theming of the fairy tale area with the traditional european thatching you see a lot of this in cambridge where the frontier offices are actually and it's just all of the little detailing on the windows and stuff i do not think this is intentional but i actually love that this almost looks like the dots on dice just because that really fits with the Mad Hatter vibe. I see a lot of dice and dominoes and stuff anytime I see Mad Hatter stuff. So yeah, this is really cool. I love how useful slash useless this lone gate is. <laughs> Connected to nothing, but yet somehow that almost makes it fit more. And of course you've got your little detailing up to the door. And this is just very, very cute. And it goes in companion with some other options we've got because Twisted Barbie didn't even just make one entry. It was very, very cool. So we have this fairy tale tree. Which is so cute. It's got it's got mushrooms around it. It's got a little door built into it, like a little house. Look at a little window built inside of it. Look at these little windows. So I do not know if anybody will be familiar with the series. But there is a book series by Enid Blyton called The Magical Faraway Tree. And it's about this magical tree in the middle of a forest and these kids move to it. And then every other month or like every other week, there's a new world at the top of the tree and they have to climb the whole way up. And there's a bunch of people that live in it that become their friends. And there's like a fairy and there's this guy called Moonface. And when they get to the top to it, there's all these magical lands. Uh, so there's like lands of candy and lands of wishes and all different things. And they go on adventures and visit them with their friends that live in the tree. And once they're done there, they get in a slide and they slide the whole way down. And that's how they get down from the tree. And at the end of it, they slide down on cushions and then they give the cushion to a little squirrel that lives in it. And the squirrel runs them all the way back up to the top. And anytime I see fairy trees like this, where people live in it, and it's got windows and everything, that's always what it makes me think of. I, I really loved the Enid Blyton series. It was a very big part of my childhood. And this just, it's nowhere near as big. Obviously it does not reach infinitely into the cloud. That's not clouds. Tried to spam to ceiling, did not manage, but it does not spam infinitely into the clouds, but it's still very cute and captures that lovely little magic fairy forest essence that fairy tales know and love so strongly. 
I love the custom way that you made the mushrooms as well. Obviously, there's a lot of people who have made toadstools in these builds, and that's very, very cool. But I'm always a suckler for a red and white toadstool. And I'm going to have a look at this little mushroom forest that's in the corner because you made so many more mushrooms. Oh my god. I did not expect this to be in this build, especially not because I looked on Steam and this was not hinted at at all. I don't know if you left it in by accident, if you were experimenting with different builds, but this is really cool. I'm never going to say no to getting a surprise bonus mushroom forest. And all of the different ways you've created mushrooms is so cool. This is awesome. And I love that because the toadstools are scattered around it, it really does make it feel like a mushroom forest because it feels like there's a variation in scale which is a very, very nice touch. I, I know it's dumb, but I really love these little thatched ones. <laughs> it, it makes it feel like a zoo feature. And I really like that. This is so cool. I am going to, because I do not know if any of these do, I'm going to dim the lights and find out if any of these glow. This is our glow check. So we've got some lights on in the Mad Hatter's house. It does make sense that he would stay up at night. So that's very fitting. I am slightly sad that these don't glow, but I mean, we could always fix that ourselves. We could always add lights throughout it, which would make sense. And especially because I have no idea if these even meant to be, were meant to be included. That completely makes sense. And then all the windows here also light up. That's cute. I like that the inside of the tree windows light up too. This is very adorable. And yeah, that's all of our builds. I'm just making sure I haven't missed anything else that lights up. So Elton B also does have the glowing lanterns. And a little light up board. Look at the bees. So cute. And I believe that's everything. I haven't missed any highlighting that they glow. I'm enjoying that everybody was like, it's a fairy tale built. It's got to glow. <laughs> and yeah, that, those last two were by Twisted Barbie. And that's all of the Plan Elk Zoo build entries, other than the one that unfortunately I cannot show you. But now I need to pick which one I'm going to pick as a winner. And oh my god, this is going to be so difficult. I'm seeing a lot of love for the fact that it glows and for the various builds we've done. I agree, but now why don't you guys try and help me? Give me some opinions on which builds you've loved seeing. And I'll try and take what you guys think into consideration so I'm not just incredibly biased. Because I try my best not to be. I really try. But... To be fair, can bias even impact so many of these, which is so great. I really love looking at everything that you guys make. Uh, so yeah, you guys show, uh, give some words, go in the chat, let me know which ones have been your favourite while looking at today's stream. While you do that, I am just going to check some stuff. Do, 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 do. Cool. It's looking like everything's all good, which is what we like to hear. But yeah, I was also checking to see if I had any way where I could potentially fix this, but it's not looking like it, which is unfortunate. I'm seeing Benji Man saying these are some beautiful community builds. They really, really are. So for anybody that's joining in, this is the various community builds for the Plan Elk Zoo building competition, which uh, I held on our forums at uh, forums.frontier.co.uk. And I hold various competitions with the Plan Elk Zoo community in there. And this one was just a little building competition to fill in a gap in our fairy tale area to win a couple of Planet Zoo goodies. But if you did not get a chance to enter this one, you still have a chance because right now there is our Cappy Paradise competition going on, which is to create the most luxurious, tranquil, 
brilliant capybara exhibit for the wetlands animal pack with the hot water tap item because it's a capybara of course they need a spa that's what they're known for um, so you've still got plenty of time to enter that you've got a couple of weeks if i remember correctly it runs until the end of this month so if you want to you can head over to the forums and check out the info on how to enter that one and the winning cappy build will i'm going to look through them on stream because it's a great way to look at them and also they're going to win a few things including a very special limited edition wetlands animal pack kit which is our self-care spa kit so it's got some like bath bombs and like a face cloth and various other things all themed around the wetlands animal pack so a little self-care so while your cappies are indulging you can too <laughs> i'm very jealous of it actually it's very nice and i've been checking out what's in the office and the face cloth is like embroidered with the danube crested newt and it's so cute and then all of it smells really good uh one of them is sandalwood scented and it, oh, it smells really really nice Oh, I'm seeing somebody say that they've been playing the Wetlands DLC pack and that they appreciate us and that they really love the Wetlands pack. Thank you. I'm very glad to hear people are enjoying it so much. Genuinely, the Wetlands pack is just gorgeous. And it's been so nice to see how much people are having fun with it. And thank you for sharing the information on the competitions, Osric. So now I am going to have a look. I'm seeing people saying they like the shrines because they glow. Seeing somebody say that they like the Elton B one, which is fair. Seeing some love for the tree. Which is fair, which is fair. So, what am I feeling? I think it's probably going to be between... The Fairy Shrine, just because I really like that it glows and how unusual the details are. The Elton B one, because it is themed to the area and I love it. And it's got so many personal details that are tied. And it is my zoo after all. And I really love that. The pumpkin house, because I really like the pumpkin pastries. I really love that it would make that whole area just into a little pumpkin patch because of the multiple community builds. And that would be a whole pumpkin patch that is just community builds. That's really cool. And... Also, this one, just because I still cannot get over the sheer detailing and the amount that they've managed to compress into this one tiny build. Like, the amount that you've managed in such a small footprint will never not impress me with this. It's just incredible. And also, I love that you've included the writing across all of the side and in every area. Like, you've told a real little story. Like, look at the adventure awaits you signed. It's just incredible so i'm thinking it's probably going to be one of those but which but which hmm. i'm going to take a look and see what they look like in the area and i think that's probably a good way to pick so we'll just go through and find them in order so rotate the L and B area which way would it be best maybe like this and then I will make it not float so this one would look like this which I think does make a really nice little feature I could of course move it up to the side or move it so it's centered but I do like that this one is a little central area and it does also provide a little coverage which kind of splits this area off and makes it into its own little shopping world which is quite cute. And it does fit, which I'm also going to base as one of the requirements. Let me check. We need to get rid of this guy. We're just going to wait for him to... There we go. And then... Where's my next one? Do, do, do. The fairy shrine. Right into the ground.
fairy shrine. So how am I like it? Probably like this, because then as people are walking up to it, it's obvious. So it does indeed fit the area. I like that it then creates this overhang over the pumpkin. I think that's very cute. Let me see what it looks like when it's glowing. The glowing is very cool. I do like that. I am a fan. But there's also a lot of empty space around here. But I mean, we could easily stick some benches and some other detailing around here and create it into kind of an inclusive area. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. We can check the pumpkin pastries. Ooh, this one might be too big. Which really is fair. Like, it's a hard building requirement and no judgment from me. But I need something to base it off of because too many of these builds are incredible. Let me see how it can... If putting this any particular way would open this up. I feel like this is probably the best I'm going to get, but this might actually work. Ooh, it does. Just. With a little bit of adjustment and placing, this would work. It. What's nice is the sign does actually then overlay directly onto this pumpkin house. I like that. I like that it really makes it look like one feature area. I just wish I was a little, a little bit smaller. Let me just see if I can adjust it and see if I can get it to fit in that space better. Let me see if I do it completely horizontal. I can get it to just squeeze in perfectly. Okay, let's try this. If I do this, Will it still overhang onto the path? Only just, and I think that's very acceptable. So this is how this one would look in this area. It's very, very cute. I really do like that this forms one area with this. That's very cool. And then our last one is our cave. Pretty sure I've left a staff member there floating in the abyss, but that's fine. Your little please hide me note was also very, very lovely. So what I'm thinking is if we... Do we want to tie this up so it's in the corner? Maybe not entirely. Maybe just like a little bit back. And then we would need to connect up the shop. Ooh, the shop's around the back, actually. Hmm. Guess we'll put this at a different angle. Let me see how this would look. Ignore the floating, ignore the abandoned staff. It's fine. Okay, I need this side to be accessible for the shop. So, yum, 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 yum. That will work out. There we go. So if this one's in this space, it'll end up looking kind of like this, depending on how I place it. Which does give this area a little shopping feel. And I do, I do just really love this area. The detailing in it is wonderful. The thing is, any of these builds that don't win, I could still place them in the zoo, which I'm very tempted to do because they are incredible. But I think, I think having looked at how they all fit, let me remember to fire these people. Cool. I think having looked at them all, the winner is gonna have to be... Drum roll. I think it's gonna have to be the pumpkin house. I love it. I love it so much. As much as I love every build that's been submitted, the fact that this creates that whole area into a little pumpkin patch, I think it's too perfect to pass up and it's spaced together really well. And the fact that I was able to sugar it just so as it fits exactly right, it really makes the use of that space and it's absolutely wonderful. So this is the Pumpkin Pastries by Musical Geek 22.
congratulations, they are the winner for the Plan Elzu competition. I will of course email you from the community email and get back to your entry so as we can contact you about your prize. But again, to everybody that has entered, thank you so much. I have been humbled by the builds and the detail and the thought that you guys have put into all of them. And I will definitely feature several of them in, even if they're not in that area, in Planet, in, in Planet Zoo because they deserve it they deserve it after the work that you guys have put in and the thought and attention like some of these builds i can't get over especially the ones that have taken into consideration moments of things that have happened on the stream or about me like it's really nice to see our community paying attention and like engaging with us the same way that we try our best to engage with you and that's really really nice so genuinely thank you so much and and seeing people showing a lot of love for the winner thank you and again thank you so much to everybody that sent something in if you are sending something in for the cappy paradise competition then you've got plenty of time but please do i would love to see them just as much i've already been seeing we've had some entries already and they're already looking great so i'm very very excited to see the kind of ideas people come up with for how to spoil their cappy barras because cappies deserve it um but nonetheless that is it so i'm gonna pan in quickly on our winning build this is our winner it's just it's too fitting not to it was too cute it worked far too well with the space so that is my musical geek 22 and now it's just me that is all we have time for this week but um if you stick around if you are on twitch um i believe we're gonna jump and we're gonna do a raid for someone and i would love to have you come and show the love for this community and how great it's been to somebody else because as i've said like it's our community that makes all of this possible. This whole stream has been celebrating the community. So let's go and show that love to somebody else. Thank you all so much for joining me. And of course, I will see you next week here again for another time at Plan Elt Zoo. Uh, cannot thank you enough for making this series and making this game what it is. I'm incredibly grateful for my job and for getting to spend this time with you guys. So until next time, goodbye. I love you all dearly. Thank you for joining me and have a good time in Planet Zoo. I hope you're enjoying the Wetlands Animal Pack. Bye.